Hi, my name is David Keegan. I'm an academic family doctor here at the University of Calgary. And what we're talking about today is how to request a consult. Wow, the interface between physicians and between health providers is really critical. We're making a consult request, asking somebody else to become involved in one of our patients' care because we are recognizing that our, uh, the scope of our skill and ability maybe is reaching its end and we need somebody else to help us out with either a procedure, a review, answering uh, a challenging piece of this puzzle or that this patient has or whatever. And done well is exceptional. Done poorly, it actually usually often means that everybody gets a bit confused and irritated and the patient maybe most of all. So being able to request a consult well is an important skill to have. And it really comes down to one main thing and then a few key tips. The main thing is, and this is critical, ask a clear question. Boom, this is it. This is the single most important thing you can do if you're asking another healthcare provider to be involved with the care of your patient, asking a clear question. And it doesn't happen very, you know, it, and sometimes that doesn't happen. You know, please see re chest pain. Please see re abdominal pain. It's like, are you wanting them to manage it? Figure it out? Uh, do surgery? You know, so instead, no, you ask a clear question. I request, you know, this consultation or I'm asking you to see this patient, colon, can you please help me or help narrow down this patient's diagnosis and give key guidance on the management? Great. Or, uh, I've, this patient has come back uh, with blood work highly suggestive of rheumatoid arthritis in the setting of symptoms that are highly suggestive of rheumatoid arthritis. Can you please review this and likely confirm the diagnosis and B, uh, please give me guidance on, you know, starting this patient on disease modifying agents. Great. You know, that's that sort of thing. Sometimes it's not a diagnosis issue at all. It's like, I've got this patient, you know, uh, with uh, known severe right knee arthritis. Uh, please see this patient regarding suitability for surgery as we have exhausted uh, all oral medications, physiotherapy, and injectable uh, agents. Oh, okay, that's a nice clear question. So, I think it's pretty clear. Ask a clear question. Now, there are a couple of tips, though, that you can do to help that. Once you ask a clear question, then you provide relevant detail. So, let's say for the, the rheumatoid arthritis patient, you know, you can, you can say, um, this patient has had a, uh, a two-month course of significant morning stiffness, starting off mild, but now in this last two weeks has had an hour uh, to an hour and a half of significant morning stiffness. She has complained of joint swelling and on exam, in fact, I was able to identify uh, multiple swollen joints uh, in her hands. Oh, you know, that's, that's a pretty clear detail. I arranged the blood work and then, you know, you, you attached it uh, and this, you know, highly suggests it is an inflammatory arthritis, possibly rheumatoid. Great. You provide any unique pieces. Unique pieces or info. I mean, it's good to be very patient-centered anyways. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of patient-centered medicine, but on the consult, you want to really flag any particular really significant things in the context or the patient's course in life. You know, if they're homeless, you put it here. If this is, you know, somebody who is going through psychological trauma from uh, a residential school experience uh, like we've had here in Canada, um, then you might actually even put that there too because it would maybe give a bit of a heads up that um, this person may have mistrusted the health system in the past. Um, you, if the person has a, a partner or spouse who's dying of cancer, 
that's a good thing to put in there so that the clinician on the receiving end has the heads up that they're, you know, if there's something significant that's outside of the range of normal, and the range of normal is pretty big, but something really significant, you know, that they need a translator or whatever, that they've gotten the heads up, that's going to really help the care that that person's going to be able to provide, and it's going to improve the care that the patient receives. And it's really important to describe what you've done. So particularly for like chronic conditions, and let's say the surgical condition with the person with osteoarthritis at the knee, you know, it's really good to be able to describe what you've done. That yeah, you've tried, you know, this patient has had these different therapies, was stabilized for three years with a very aggressive physiotherapy regimen, along with uh, injectable uh, agents and so on. Um, but now the last, you know, four months is now extra in extraordinary pain, is unable to get to work, you know, their quality of life has really dramatically decreased, you know, something like that. Then that way the person on the receiving end knows, okay, they don't probably have to go down those steps again. They might want to double check some stuff, you know, make sure it was the, you know, the kind of physiotherapy that is, has the best evidence behind it for that condition. But you're really giving the evidence to the person to enable them to make sure that they provide the care that that patient needs. Now, this was all about requesting a consult. If you're on the other end, if you're you know, receiving the consult is how to respond to a consult. And I'm not, I'm not a consultant physician usually. I do some consulting around uh, you know, some, some conditions, but um, I'm primarily uh, the person who's consulting others. But on the other end, the key flip side of this, if somebody asks you a clear question, Make sure you provide a clear answer. There are many times, you know, I have got some fantastic colleagues who provide me, when I ask them a clear question, they give me a great answer, and then I'm fully enabled, and it's like, okay, now I know that I, I should be avoiding, you know, a certain type of medication class for this patient or whatever, but I'm fully enabled to now take that, to take the handover of that patient back and do great work. But there's other times, you know, where I've been there, when, I get back a consult and I'm thinking like they didn't actually even really ever answer the question. You know, and it's like, oh, that didn't really help. And so then that's just more difficult for everybody. Then I've got to like call somebody up and find out, sorry, did you, I asked this question, can you provide me the answer? Can you tell me what you were thinking or whatever? I mean, that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't, everybody spends more time on the issue and the patient ultimately has delaying care. But I do recognize that there are definitely people on my end who might not ask a clear question. So it's actually, we're in a relationship. Consultants and consultees, you know, we have to be partners in this with the patient so that we're helping each other be their best member of this team of care for this patient. And one of the key things is asking a clear question and on the flip side, providing a clear answer. Thanks very much.